Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and today we're going to be talking about another supply chain attack. This time through an open source dependency that is used on GitHub Actions that was a, that was a potential exfiltration risk. So, this was initially detected by Step Security, which is a dependency security company. And of course, there's a reason why companies like this are... Uh, becoming increasingly successful because open source and dependency is in general are being modified to have malicious code. So their automated tools very quickly detected that there was new functionality here that was not legitimate. So what ultimately happened is the code was modified so that secrets would be dumped in the action log, which on a public GitHub repository would be public. This function was added here and you can see, I mean, you should never see a bunch of base64 and then an exec. You can pretty much guarantee that that is being used for malicious purposes. What this actually does is it curls a malicious piece of code from GitHub here, memdump.py. Now we can then see. This essentially dumps the memory of the build process. They also tried to camouflage who wrote the commit by using the renovate bot. Now next up, I'm going to go through the Wayback Machine and do a little deep dive of the GitHub, but first, a brief message from our sponsor. Ever wondered why you're getting spam calls addressed by your name? Hello, is this the Mr. Eric Barker? Why ads seem too personal or how identity thieves get your information? Data brokers are a key force behind it. They collect and sell personal details like your name, address, shopping habits, politics, finances, and even family connections which scammers exploit. Worse still, Manually removing your information from these brokers is time-consuming and ineffective. Even if you get your data off of the site, dozens more still sell it. Incogni, our sponsor today, solves this by automatically contacting data brokers and demanding that they remove your data. Here's how simple it is. Sign up, create an account, authorize it, and relax. To take back control of your data, visit Incogni at the link below and use code Eric Parker for 60% off of an annual plan. That's incogni.com slash Eric Parker. Now back to our main programming. Now we can see the commit issue here. Multiple tags in this action are compromised. Example tag was just updated three hours back and is potentially exfiltrating credentials. You can read more about it here. Thank you for reporting. I love the bot here just saying, don't forget to start this project if you haven't already to help us reach a wider audience. Some people are just chuckling at that, while others are voting it down. Yup, this looks scary. And then there's additional, more people have been looking at it. Thank you for your awareness. Ultimately dumps memory to GHA logs, which can include GitHub Actions secrets. That's the concern. And we can actually find this memdump.py. It checks if you are on Linux. So this is unlike most, uh, which is going to check for Windows, but of course, because that's usually where, where the build job is going to happen, it's going to check for Linux. And this appears this file's been up for quite a while. And here we can see this GitHub gist for memdump. Now on Linux, because remember in Unix, everything is a file. So by knowing the right directory, you get the PID and then you can actually get the memory and map. And then you can go through the memory this way. It's a bit different than the Windows read process memory method. And then it simply dumps this and the ultimate end game is that the process memory is written to the console, which goes into the GitHub Actions logs. And the benefit of this is then if it's a public GitHub, the malicious actor could potentially read secrets. This seems like a very half-baked implementation. There is no C2 server. This isn't getting exfiltrated anywhere that a would be private. As a result of this GitHub token being linked, Guess what? You get more backdoors because they can use the GitHub token to modify more repositories and, ex and achieve more backdoors. So luckily, GitHub acted quickly and took down this changed files action, which did have a legitimate use. I'm sure they'll put it back up once this is cleared, whether uh, either the developer went rogue, which is uncommon, or more common in this kind of uh, obvious backdoor, what probably happened is that someone with commit permissions was hacked, either they ran an info stealer or some other piece of malware, 
Uh, and then their GitHub account was taken over, and that was then used to ship the back door. So what this ultimately used to do, uh, it would effortlessly track all changed files and directories relative to a target branch, the current branch. So this was a way of seeing which files had been changed, and it was a very popular thing. Uh, it had 2,000 stalls, was being used by thousands of projects, which means potentially this could hit quite a few projects, and as a result of the secret being leaked in the logs, although using double base 64 so it wouldn't immediately get scraped, the actor could then go and take that secret and then take over their GitHub, uh, which isn't great. Now, I did also want to provide an update uh, on a different, uh, different open source situation we covered a while ago. I knew it at the time, and I mentioned it in the video, about this VS Code material theme that was, you know, it was obfuscated, the developer was being weird, but it was pretty easy to tell that it wasn't actually malware. And ultimately, uh, this whole mess happened where there was a report, and they say there were red flags. What I think happened is a company that made this questionable AI-powered scanner that I don't think is good uh, claimed this was malicious, and then that got around through the media, and ultimately it was taken down. Reality is, it was not malicious, and as a result, it is back on the Visual Studio team. Visual Studio Marketplace. Now here we got some decent overall recommendations. Uh, yes, uh, ch check if this was installed. Hopefully you know if, if you're a single developer, but if you've got a bunch of people, just check if this was in your GitHub Actions. Of course, you can check there. You can also use SEMgrep uh, for this. Which is surprisingly, removing a GitHub Action is more difficult than you might think. And you can also, you can pin them so that supply chain compromises can't happen. What a lot of people are saying, and I kind of agree with, is... It's just becoming increasingly unsafe to have a ton of dependencies. Luckily, there are tools, not not like these tools, not that Step Security or SEMgrep are sponsors. I don't know actually that much about them, but I do think it's good that more is being done about supply chain attacks. And of course, on the desktop and the endpoint, zero trust platforms do help with preventing supply chain compromise. But it's a big problem, and it's a growing problem, and it can be a cascading problem, because if you have an open source project that uses 25 dependencies, and one of those dependencies is pwned, now you have been pwned, and if your project is a dependency, you've got a cascading problem. <laughs> Reminds me of what uh, Maurice said, uh, he's a very good reverse engineer and makes a, a cool emulator project, also did a cool article about reversing Hogwarts Legacy, Rust is safer than C++, but the one drawback is also a benefit, and that is that because it has a good package manager, the risk of supply chain attacks is much higher. So that's my thoughts for now. It's going to be all for this video. Please do leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe, let me know in the comments below how you feel about all of these supply chain attacks. And that's not to mention one other trend I have seen is some supply chain attackers will take advantage of AI hallucinations where they will create a package. They will test this out with ChatGPT and they'll see, all right, when does it hallucinate a package that doesn't exist? And then they just create the package and fill it with malware. How do you avoid that one? Well, you can look at the code, but realistically, you're not going to read the code of every dependency you use. It's just it is becoming a worse problem. That's all for me for now. Bye.